So in this example, I'm not going to really, I just want to figure out what exactly they, what the possible solutions are. So I'm just going to set this equal to f of x. OK? So by setting this equal to f of x, um, if I want to find the number of positive possible real zeros, all I'm going to do is take my function f of x and find the number of sign changes. You don't really need to rewrite it. You could obviously do it just from your problem, but I'm just going to rewrite it for your purposes. So anytime you have a sign change is when you go from a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive. But since I only have one sign change of my original function, question? No question? OK. I have one real positive solution. Or we could call that a 0, because it is a 0. Cool? Everybody loves the positive. Those are easy. The negative involves a little bit of work. So the negative, you need to do f of negative x. So when you're doing f of negative x, you have negative x cubed minus 6 times negative x squared minus 7 times negative x minus 12. Is everybody OK with that step? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Everybody's OK. Just remember, guys, whenever you have a negative value raised to an odd power, it's still going to be negative. Whenever you have an odd, po odd value raised to an even power, it's going to turn positive. So negative x cubed is going to now turn into negative x cubed. Negative x squared is now positive x squared. But positive x squared times negative 6 is now a negative 6x squared. Negative 7 times negative x is now a positive 7x minus 12. So now we count the sign changes. Negative to positive, positive to negative. So remember, Descartes' rule of sign says, though, the number of sign changes minus an even number. Yes? Well, it's a negative 6. But remember, it's negative x squared, which is negative x times negative x. Negative x times negative x is what? Positive x squared, right? So what's negative 6 times x squared? Just negative 6x squared. Is that? So just the squaring, I know it gets. So it's like time. So just remember any negative number. Remember, you just use order of operations. You've got to square it before you multiply it. OK? Um, so there's two. But remember, Descartes' rule of signs, and this is what everybody forgets, it's always the number of sign changes minus an even number. Well, I can't subtract, my, I can't subtract an even number from 1 and still have a positive value. So I have to subtract. So in this case, I have 2 or 0 real negative solutions or zeros. Yes. Then what I do to find the number of complex is I create my box, which I did in class. So we do, there's positive solutions, there's negative solutions, there's complex solutions, and there's the total. Because I don't know what the question on your test is going to ask you, so we might as well figure out what, they're, what all of them are. Well, the number of positive, we said there's only one. The number of negative, there's actually two options. You could have two negative, or you could have zero negative, right? So I know that for, since my negative has two options, that's why I created two rows for each option, or two columns for each option. Well, positive is always one. Negative is two or zero. The total is the degree, right? You can only have as high as your total. So that's going to be 3 and 3. Well, if I have one positive, two negative, how many complex do I have to have? Zero. If I have one, one positive, zero negative, how many complex do I need to have to have a total of three solutions? Two. So the total number of complex solutions is 2 or 0. Yes? That's just the rule of Descartes' rule of science. It states the number of sign changes minus an even number. So I always just subtract 2 because that's the, like when you think of even numbers, you think of a number divisible by 2. So just always subtract 2 as many times as you can. 
So for instance, let's just play a little game. Let's pretend this one had five sign changes. Then you do five, three, two, one. Let's pretend it had six sign changes. Then you do six, four, two, zero. Just always subtract an even number. Does that kind of make sense? Any last questions on this?